Anything doing? Everything's pretty quiet. Yeah. It's kind of cold, ain't it? Well, it's time for long coat. Yeah, I was saying. Oh, good evening, officer. Evening? Why, well, it's almost morning. It is? What time is it? 12.30. Say, don't you know it's against the law to be sleeping and spooning around here in the park? We didn't mean to break any law, officer. And you, young woman, you should be home in bed instead of lolling on this guy's shoulder. Weren't you ever in love? Yeah. That's why I'm paying alimony. He's got a nerve. I got a notion to make him eat that wise crack. Oh, gosh, the money. Oh, is it there all right? Oh, yeah, it's there. Gosh, I should never have gone to sleep with all that money in my pocket. $230 takes a long time to save. Do you think $230 is enough to get married on? Sure. Some people get married on nothing. It doesn't seem possible that tomorrow at this time, I'll be Mrs. Thomas Jonathan Brown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, squeeze me. <laughs> when you're my wife, Nancy, you better quit working. As soon as I get a raise. Oh, I got a better idea. Couldn't you get me a job at that apartment house where you work? Then we could be together. Doing what? Why, at the switchboard. Well, I might arrange it. I've got a lot of influence with the superintendent. He likes me. He told me yesterday I was the best assistant he ever had. Oh, that'd be grand. It's one of the swellest apartment hotels in town, isn't it? Is it? And among our tenants are some of the biggest financial men of New York. Really? Yeah. Why, there's one apartment on the 10th floor, a man named Frank Smiley. Well, I was in there one night fixing the radiator, and they just finished playing poker. And I saw one fella give another one $980 in cash and a check for $7,200. Where did they get so much money? I wish I knew. Here we've both been working hard every day for six months, and all we have is $230. Well, we're lucky to have that. That's right, too. Oh, Tommy, I love you so much. If anything happened to you, i jump in the river. Well, Nancy, I'd want you to. I couldn't stand the thought of any other fella having you. Honey, there's something about you that's different. Well, squeeze me. <laughs> Stick him up. Stick him up and be quick about it. You want to keep all your parts together? Oh, you're kidding me. Come across. Let him have the money, Tommy. He might kill you. Oh, no, we can't get married, Tommy. Oh, stay single. You're a lot better off, and you're money ahead. And now, not a yip out of either one of you. Hold your hands up until I'm out of sight. You want to keep that schoolboy complexion. Tommy, squeeze me. You think I want to get shot? You can put your hands down. Now he's gone. Oh, Tommy, you certainly were brave. Well, you I, even kidded with him. I thought he was fooling. Oh, Tommy, what are we going to do? We're going to get married just as we planned. I've got an idea. You come with me. <laughs> Say, listen. As sure as my name is Frank Smiley, if you treat them square, they'll be square with you. you oh, now I know why you gave us such a good dinner, Frank. He's in the market for some jewelry, cheap. <laughs> now, Emery, you got me wrong. I just wanted to give you folks a nice, good home-cooked dinner. And for every raisin in the pudding, you'll expect a carrot's worth of diamonds for a nickel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Say, you know I'm giving you more than the value for the stuff than you're giving me. Then why don't you get it at a regular place? 
Ah, I want to give you boys a chance. This is Emery you're talking to? <laughs> Come on, let's sit down and finish the rubber. Rocky's been detained a few minutes. He's on his way upstairs now. Good, I hope Dean gets here. I want to get some sleep tonight. My deal. You can't get any sleep in this man's town in the daytime. I guess I'm not a nightlifer. Well, you won't get any sleep tonight either. We've got a date at the club later. We always have a date somewhere. Hello, Lola. Everybody here? Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hello Doc. Who are you expecting? You. You better be. <laughs> Jean here yet? No. Why didn't you come to dinner tonight, Rocky? Sorry I couldn't make it, Frank. Say, where is Jean? It's nearly one o'clock. He's out stepping with some high hats. He phoned he'd be late. I wonder what Jean wants to see me about tonight, Rocky. How should I know? You ought to. You're his right hand. Listen, I'm both his hands, only he doesn't know it. Someday I'll tell him, and he'll get a surprise. Ooh, so will you, maybe. Now, don't do anything right away. <laughs> I think maybe Jeannie has a business proposition. He wants to talk over with me tonight. Don't be a silly old boy. You know I love you. Do you? Oh, don't you know it? You sure? Don't you know it? Gene ought to see that. He'd love Rocky more than ever. Oh, Gene doesn't care. When a gentleman is finished with a lady, if he is a gentleman, he'll provide a successor, huh, Frankie? Yes, that sometimes reduces the pain of separation. Oh, and the cost. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Gene gave us all the air one of these days. Who's play? It's yours. Think Gene is getting ready to quit the game? Oh, I wouldn't say that. He couldn't be such a success if he didn't like it a little bit. Well, come on. Now, what you playing, Emily? You know, I think Gene likes to think of himself as some sort of a modern Robin Hood. Do you ever notice he never pulls a job against a man who isn't known to be crooked himself? I wonder where he gets all... Oh, pardon. That romantic stuff. When you're in a racket, you're in a racket. Gene has too many scruples for his own good. I had think he was a brigadier general and I was a buck private. Well, aren't you? Gene's the brains of this outfit. Yeah, well, listen. I can plan the breaks as well as he can. And any time he wants to take a long trip, little me is all ready to take charge of this outfit. Listen, how can I think how to play when you're all talking like that? Why don't you play marbles, then? The dog wouldn't annoy you. Hello, Jean. Come in. Hello, Frank. Well, well there you are. Hello, Jean. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Frank. Don't let me disturb you, Rocky. You didn't disturb me. I got up to get a light. How are you, Donnie? Sleepy, Frank. It's going to be a long session. Not long. Why don't you run home to bed? Well, boys, I've got something that's awfully good news. Something you like, Frank. Yeah? I've decided that our friend Coleman, the jeweler, should part with some of his ill-gotten game. Coleman? Coleman? Jean, if you clean out Coleman, I promise to pay full value for the stuff. Now, I promise. Why is Coleman's stuff so valuable? His jewelry's no better than anyone else's. But he ran me out of business once by paying the boys 10 to 15 percent more. He broke me. Boys, I'll give you 20 percent more for Coldman stuff. Well, we'll make that concession let him have it. Oh, Jeannie, you don't know what you're doing for me. I've waited 25 years to see Coleman cleaned out. He's been getting away with murder for years. That's a bargain, Frank. A bargain? Sure, it's a bargain. He's a dirty crook. When do we pull the trick? Oh, sometime next week. I'll give you the layout in a few days. I'll tell you what, boys, I've got something special I'll open for this occasion to celebrate. Right. Come on, Rocky. But, Frank, we can't. Why not? We've got a date at the Royal. I'm not going to the club. Tell Pete I'll be there later. I want to stick around and see what else Gene has on his chest. Goodbye. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mom. Good night. You, uh, haven't changed your mind about wanting to see me, have you? No. What's the matter? Isn't Rocky all you expected him to be? Oh, yes. Yes, but I just hoped that you'd miss me, Jean. Well, I haven't. You like Rocky. You picked him. Now you, uh, be happy. Not butting in on anything, I hope. Not at all. Say, we're not going to have any trouble over that, are we? Trouble? Why should we? Well, you're sensible. I thought you might be jealous. Of you? 
Mm-hmm. But jealousy implies equality. Oh, so you don't think I'm your equal, eh? Not in the least, socially. And that need interfere with our business relations. If you know as much as I do, you'd be running this outfit instead of me. Maybe I will be, sooner than you think. Oh, be quiet, Rocky. Oh, he doesn't know what he's saying, Gene. No, oh, don't I? Well, let me tell you something. You're either for your swell society friends or you're for us. The gang don't like it. They're getting fed up on you. How would you know where there was a million dollars worth of jewelry lying around or a half a million dollars worth of bonds if I wasn't mixing with the little class? We've got our own crowd to find that out. What are we paying finders for? Dot, Margie and Emery, and a couple of dozen others. And keeping up that royal club. An idea of yours that costs us plenty. For what? So you can plant your ritzy friends. Our payroll's big enough to crack a safe for. You can't be in this racket and have a code of ethics. I never got an invitation to the Queen's reception, but I know my business. We want a leader with a couple of guns in his hand. Like you. Well, the gang like me, and that's good enough. Well, let me tell you something. I don't go in for murder, if that's what you mean. And while I'm running this outfit, you lay off the gunplay. Now we'll make a little poker, eh? What do you say? You know, you trimmed me good last time. All right, I'll let you win your money back, Frank. Come on, Rocky. You don't mind, Doc? Huh? No. No, I've got something exciting to do. What? I'm going into your room and take a nap. <laughs> well, who's going to be back here? Let Frank be banker. It's his house. All right. Nobody else can be banker. Every time I'm banker, I lay out more money than I take in. Oh, go on, Frank. Don't be a piker. All right, but uh, I want cash in advance. No more checks. Mr. Smiley, are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating nothing. But I had a little trouble with a certain check two weeks ago. I thought <laughs> we were going to play for fun. Yeah, sure we are. We're going to play for buttons, aren't we, Frank? <laughs> Come on, now. What's everybody doing? <laughs> Somebody doing something? Yes. Uh, uh, I raised it fifty dollars. What do you mean you raised it? Nobody's open yet. Huh? You mean to say that nobody's opened the first spot? Oh, now look close, look close. Say somebody must have opened it. Yes. No. No. All right. I said I'd never open on two little pair again, but I will. I'll make it easy for you, fellas. I'll open it for two buttons. Pick them up. Be quick about it if you want to keep all your parts together. Now you guys, all stand up and keep your hands in the air. Well, I'm tired of sitting anyway. Now stand over there and face the wall. Quick! Come in, honey. Go frisk him. Huh? See if they got any guns and take them away from him. Frisk them. Oh, frisk him. You haven't got any. Well, go on to the next one, then. Go on, honey. Don't be afraid. You guys try to get funny and I'll shoot. I'm desperate and I mean it. I wouldn't get funny, Mr. Come on, Can I help you? Put your hands up. What can I do with them? Bring them to me. Gee, you guys must be soldiers. Soldiers? Hey, you bitch. Just step out here. You mean me, buddy? Put your hands in the air. Come on, be quick about it if you want to keep all your parts together. Go through his pocket, honey, and get his roll. Oh, he's got a lot. Just peel off $230 and put the rest back. Keep looking at the wall, you fellas, if you want to keep all your parts together. He's got $410. Just peel off $230 and put the rest back. That's all we want. Thanks. Now put ours in my coat pocket. Don't you think we better take it off for our trouble? No. Now, you big stiff, you go over and face the wall with the rest of them guys. We get all we want this evening. Go on. Bring the guns along, honey. We'll leave them outside. Now, not a move or a sound out of you guys for five minutes if you want to keep those schoolboy complexions. Come on. Oh, oh, Let's see who these furs are. <clears throat> if you don't mind. Not at all. I'm glad to get rid of it. Well, they're just a couple of kids. Highway robbers. Honest, Mr. We're not professional crooks. Why, you surprised me. I'm going to notify the police. Don't call the cops. I want to tell you something. This guy here is a thief and he stuck me up in the park. Oh, and don't I... give me that. Go on, Frank. Call the cops. Just a minute, Frank. Wait a minute. Before you call him, let her get away, because it's all my fault. I got her into this. I don't care what you do to me, but let now her... Now, take it easy, son. 
Frank, will you turn to those guns? Sure. I'll and have you on. the uh, villainous-looking weapon that that desperado held us up with? Now, I'm going to let you go, young lady, but uh, don't try any fast ones on me. No, sir. All right, you stay right here while I operate on this uh, big bird. Well, there's nothing in it. So there isn't. <laughs> You've got to hand it to them. They've got nerve. I'll say they have. What are we going to do with them? Hand them over to the cops. The professional cooks in this town are getting too much competition. What was the idea, son, only taking 230? Well, because that was all he took from me, and I just want to get my money back, that's all. That guy's a thief, I tell you. No. Yeah. Say, give a look. This kid works here in the house. Yes, I remember. Came up one night to fix the radiator. Why, the oh, nerve. You work in the building? Kid. Sure I do. Tom, he was only taking his own money, because that man took it from him. Oh, tell that to the cops and give him a big laugh. Listen to What was the idea of sticking up those kids with that money? Well, I was walking over here tonight through the park, and uh, I heard the kid talking about getting married, and he saved up 230 bucks to go on a honeymoon and tie the knot. I thought I'd take it away from that was all. It was just a gag. Just naturally me. That's me, Gene. I'm glad to see you getting on to yourself. Thanks. Do you mind if I see these kids alone? No, oh, not a bit. Sure. Come on, Emery. Perfectly all right. Come on, Rocky. He's the precious kid I have. Say, Gene, hmm? Those kids almost pulled off a pretty neat job tonight. They showed promise. Why not make friends with them? You're all right, kid. But well, you've got a little dirt on your shoulder. Go on, Rocky. <laughs> Well, you, uh, you two bandits must have had a strenuous evening, holding up four men. You tired? Sit down. Mister, you're not going to turn us over to the cops. Well, it all depends. How old are you? Twenty. How old are you? Eighteen. I suppose you've known each other for years, your old friend. Well, we were going to get married tomorrow. Well, don't your parents object to your getting married so young? Well, you see, my folks live in Ohio, and I work at Gimble's. You don't commute? Oh, no. How much money do you earn at Gimble's? Fourteen dollars a week. My job pays me fifty a month, my room and tips. You have a position. Where are you up here? Oh, I haven't got any. Not for years. No? No. My old man married a widow in Danbury, Connecticut, and he don't care anymore. I see. Well, you are both sort of, uh... Orphans, aren't you? Well, so am I. We're kind of in the same boat. You won't have us arrested, will you, mister? He won't well, have us arrested. Now, now, you committed a very serious offense coming in here tonight. Holding up four men with a revolver. That's highway robbery. That means 15 years in prison. Oh, you oh, wouldn't send us to prison for that. Winter, winter. No, I, I like you. I like you both. How would you like to work for me? <laughs> oh, we'd like it, wouldn't we, Nancy? Well, I'd like to help you, and I... I can pay you much more than you earn in your present jobs. What do you say? Well, what do we have to do? Well, I'll find out that when I see what you're best fitted for. In the meantime, you'll go home with me tonight. I live alone. It'd be nice to have you. Sort of like a family. What do you say? Well, I, I guess it'll be all right. What do you say, boss? Oh, I say sure. But before I go anyplace, I'll have to stop by Mrs. Dillon's. Mrs. Dillon's? Yeah, I'll have to get my clothes. Oh, well, don't worry about that. I'll send it for those. Now, in the meantime, I'll say good night to my host, and then we'll go. He's awful nice, isn't he? Yeah, isn't he? I think so. Well, Miss Nancy Porter. Not 
Are these all for me? Sure. The whole blessed lot. <laughs> Gee, Nancy, you look swell. Isn't Gene wonderful to buy us all these new clothes? Well, he certainly has good taste. Everything he bought us, I'd have picked out myself. I can't help but think of those poor girls down at Gimble. <laughs> <laughs> well, this life may be all right for a woman, but a week of it's got me kind of restless. I wish he'd put me to work. He will as soon as he finds out what we're to do. You don't think it'll be something we can't do, do you, Nancy? Why, no, he wouldn't expect us to work at a trade we've never learned. I think he's going to let us choose a profession and study it. What would you like to be, Tommy? Well, I wouldn't like to be a gambler. Tommy, you don't mean... I don't know what I mean, but I got suspicions. Oh, Tommy, you're crazy. I don't want you to mention those suspicions of yours again. Gene is nice. He's been wonderful to us. Oh, it's Gene now, is it? Oh, you're jealous and ungrateful, Tommy Brown. I admire Mr. Fenmore, and I respect him. You're just like all women. You're weak. I hope you're not going to let a few fine clothes make a demimond out of you. Why, Tommy Brown, don't you call me a demimond? Well, maybe you're not, yet. But I'm a man, and I know how these things start. Oh, you know I'm not a demimond. Yes, honey. Well, then squeeze me. <laughs> I know Jean's a good man. You know, a woman can tell whether a man's all right or not with her intuition. All right. If your intuition says so, maybe he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, Rosie, has Mr. Fenmore any more socks with holes in them? I don't think so. But I, I, I didn't look in his wastebasket yet this morning. Oh, does he throw them away when they get holes? Sure. And a good thing it is for me that he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am back in the bosom of my family. How are you, Tommy? I'm all right, Mr. Fenmore. How's the little girl abandoned this morning? I never was so happy in my life. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad to hear it. What are you doing with my shirt? Sewing on the buttons. Well, now, that's sweet of you, Nancy. She's a darling, isn't she, Tommy? Yeah. You know, I, I never had anyone sew on my buttons. How'd you keep up your pants? Sew them on yourself? <clears throat> my tailor does that. But I like to have Nancy do it. I love to do it. Yeah, well, just that, I'm going to give you a present. Oh, Jean. Another present. Mm-hmm. Something every day. Well, it isn't. I've had this for a long time. I, I, I don't often come across a piece that I uh, really like. But when I do, I keep it for an occasion just such as this. Uh, I hope you like bracelets. Oh, it's diamonds. Is it real? Oh, genuine A1 stuff, Tommy. Oh, Jean. This beautiful old Tommy, isn't it lovely? Oh, I never dreamed of having such a thing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it is nice, Mr. Fenmore. Yes. Of course, I could tell you it belonged to my mother, but it didn't. And you may call me Jean, too, Tommy. Thanks. Oh, Jean, why are you so good to us? Well, just because I'm selfish. And it gives me great pleasure to see you so happy and beautiful. <laughs> car is waiting downstairs for the kids. They'll be right down. Wait, I'll get your coat. Here, here. Not today, dear. Oh, Jean, how can I ever thank you for everything? Just by being the lovely little thing that you are, being my little pal, make a new man of me. I'll always try to be. Coming, Nancy? Yes, Tommy. There you are, dear. So. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye. Goodbye dear. Tell Eddie not to drive too fast. Goodbye. Uh -huh. All right. Goodbye. 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 So you fall for the little girl, eh? I see it coming the first day she was here. You see a lot, don't you? Well, I see that she's more than half in love with you, too. Not in love at all. She's just dazzled by a little luxury. Ah, don't kid yourself, Chief. I'm not. She's in love with that boy. She's in love with Tommy. She may not be as sure as she was a couple of weeks ago, but I know. You're awful simple sometimes for a guy with brains. Maybe. But for once in my life, I'm thinking of someone else. 
I'd like to see that kid happy. If you could make a girl happy if you try, you know, it's my opinion, you can't fight love. It always licks you. Now, don't you give up that kid if you really want her. And don't get on too high ground with women, Chief. It doesn't pay. I had a chance once when I was a young buckle. I passed it up because I thought I wasn't good enough for her. You're not sorry, are you? You bet I'm sorry. Made a bum out of me. And later she married a copper. That was worth sacrificing myself for, I'll tell the world. I wish I could get out of this racket. Uh, you've been wishing that a long time, Chief, but you can't do it. They did never let you go running around the streets with all you know. Don't I know it? But you got out and you're still drawing your breath. Yes. I got out because they all think I'm too old-fashioned with my methods. But I'm safe because they think I didn't want to get out. But I take good care never to be seen with any very respectable folks. Running around with respectable people is liable to rouse suspicion. Sure it does. Why, well, your own gang is kind of suspicious of you, playing around with a lot of swells. Well, I'm going to give them a good eyeful tonight. I'm taking a rich banker and his party down to the club. They've heard that it's a hangout for underworld characters. She don't say so. Well, I, I just breeze in and give you and your ritzy friends the once over. Yeah, do that. Do that, Monty. <laughs> and we'll have a lot of laughs. When I see you, that'll be funny, won't it? <laughs> about time for the gathering of the clan. Yeah. Our Brigadier General knows it, too. He's getting ready to send his slumming party home. Come on, Emery, let's go. We'll meet you outside. All right. Take them off before starting out. Very wise. There's Joe. 
jewelry we have on is real Woolworth. Yes, I noticed that. But I hope you didn't leave your good things around for some porch climber to pick up. Oh, no. I always keep mine in a sewing basket in my bedroom. How original. I hope you have a clever hiding place for your things, Mrs. Allen. Oh, I always toss mine in an old hat box in the top of my closet. A uh, hat box? How <laughs> yes. perfectly naive. But, uh, Nothing useful is <laughs> going to a safe so often. Well, I said, who would ever think of a hat box? Nobody ever think that. Remember that. Thank you, Mr. Singer. What Mr. Singer? Good night, Mr. Singer. Can we drop you somewhere? Thank you, no. I'm walking home. Good night, Mr. Singer. 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 Good night, Mr.
Well, I guess I'll come in and wait for him. Hello, Tommy. You're just the lad I'm looking for. What do you want of me? You know, I feel I owe you something. You know, I guess that was kind of a mean trick I played on you, pretending to hold you up and take your money. Pretending? You took it. But I knew who you were all the time. Why, well, I was going to give it back to you the next day. Oh, did you recognize me? Why, of course, just as you recognized me. But just to show you how much I like you kids, I've got the boys, you know, Gene's friend. Well, they're going to chip in and buy you and Nancy a swell present. Oh, Mr. Rocky. We know you kids want to be married, and you haven't got much money. Have you got an engagement ring? No. We were just going to have a wedding ring for a while. Well, you've got to have an engagement ring. We're going to give you $2,000. That'll buy a nice big diamond engagement ring and a wedding ring besides. Oh, did you hear that, Tommy? Gee, Rocky, I had you all wrong. It's great of you and the boys to do this for us. No, it's nothing at all. We owe it to you. At least, I do. Now, I've got an idea. Do you know where Coleman's jewelry shop is just off Broadway? Yeah, I know Coleman's. Well, he'll give you rock bottom prices. You go in there, oh, any time tomorrow afternoon. I'll drive you by if you like. I'll be going down there. Oh, thanks. You meet me downstairs. Now, don't say a word to Gene about this, will you? Oh, no. You'll surprise him, eh? All right. Good. Then we're pals. Sure. sure. Lucky not to get to do this for us, Rocky. No, it's nothing at all. It's almost closing time. You go in and ask to see some diamond wedding rings and some diamond engagement rings. Don't buy the first ones he shows you, will you? They'll be the bum ones. Oh, we'll only buy the best blue white stuff. That's it. Here. Here's some money. Don't lose it, will you? No, we won't. I'm sorry I can't go with you, but I'll see you later. <laughs> All right, fine. This isn't Jean, this 
is Rocky. Hello, Don. Then come right over here to Jeans, will you? All right, I'll wait for you. Well, Marcy, aren't you going to congratulate the boys? What for? No trick to it. No art in it. Just machine work. That young blood, I'm glad I've got hardening of the arteries. Too safe for any romance. Safe, my eye. Well, at that, it's the first real job I've seen pulled off in 16 years. Too bad you had to use your gap, Rocky. Forget it. Coleman is dead. What's the big idea, Chief? I told you I didn't want any butchery. Now, you boys get out of here. I want to talk to Rocky alone. Oh, what are you going to do when a guy starts squawking? Stand there and wait for the cop? You bumped Coleman off. I did? You yellow, white livid. Oh, cut it! He starts to howl, I told him to shut up. You reach for a gap? No, I didn't reach for a gap. Well, he lowered his hands, and this baby isn't taking any chances. Didn't my instructions mean anything to you? What kind of a business do you think you're in? It's a game, isn't it? You yellow, Rocky. Well, I wasn't going to let 75 grand slip away from me for a worm like Coleman. Now, Forget wait a minute. Something else I want to talk over with you. What did you mean by sending Nancy and Tommy in as the coys when I told you not to? It didn't hurt him, I did it. We wanted somebody who wouldn't be recognized. And you picked the one person in the world I didn't want mixed up in this business. That's why I told you not to. You didn't need any decoys. You just wanted to hit at me where you knew it had hurt the most. Now, I've stood for you for a long time, but this is the end. By your dirty, low-down, yellow, white livid. That's enough! You're not going to talk about me again! Give me that! Give me that! Look here, Rocky. You're stopping on me, yeah? Come on! Come on. What did you do that for, Gene? Hello, everybody. Well, I hear it's been a very successful job. Oh, now, don't be downhearted, Jean, because Coleman got shot. Remember, it's all in the game. Yes, I guess getting shot is in the game. Sure. Oh, well, where's Rocky? You dirty bully. You were jealous of him because he took me away from you. And what's more, you were afraid he was going to take the gang away from you, too. You knew Rocky had your number and he was going to show you what's right. You and your mastermind. Ha! You and your orders of no shooting, you crawling hypocrite. You used a gat all right and you killed the only boy I ever really loved. You can't get away with that. I'll make you pay and pay good. I can do it, too. You know I can do it. I'll have you plugged for this. So help me, I'll have you plugged for this. Come on, Doc. Don't have got to get out of here. Get All right, Frank. He can't get away. Rocky was one of the gang. You've no right to give it to him. You'll have to answer to the gang for this. You get the boys together, and I'll be there at the club tonight. On your word? I'll be there at 1 o'clock, my word. All right. What is he going to do to you? I want you kids to go upstairs. Will you do that for me, please? We want to have a talk with you. Not now, later. 
I didn't want you mixed up in that job today. Oh, I know, but what are they going to do to you? They mustn't. They can't. Would it mean so much to you? Oh, Gene, I don't want anything to happen to you. I feel as if you needed me. Oh, I'd do anything to help you. You can help me most by going upstairs now. All right, Gene. Oh, whatever you are, you'll always be wonderful to me. I'm going to try you, eh? They ain't going to bump you off like they did Pinky. Well, I hope not. Why don't you make a getaway, Jean? I'll go with you. Shame to you, Mousy. Now, you did the right thing in bumping that butcher off. But you'll have a hard time making the gang believe it. They liked Rocky, so they did. Well, I'll have to worry about that. What about the kid? Bring her down there tonight. Bring them both down. I'll beat this, Marcy. I've got to beat it now. This is the most important date you've had for a long time. We're trying Gene for the killing of Rocky. So listen here, Marcy. What did you bring those kids here for? The boss is on Sit down. Well, it's one o'clock and he isn't here yet. Six months digging his way out of Sing Sing. And by a miscalculation, came up in the warden's office. Yeah. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? They're taking him for a ride tonight. My standing, is it? Gene, we're going to give you a fair trial. But if the gang decide against you, I guess you know what that means. I know. Rocky was the most popular and useful member of this gang. And you had no right to shoot him down in cold blood just because you had a grudge against him. Well, why don't you give him a dose of his own medicine? Show him how a chunk of cold lead feels. Gene! Oh, now, just a minute. You haven't given me a chance to talk. Yeah, well, why should you speak? You shot him, didn't you? Wait a minute. Well, let's hear what you have to say, Gene. Well, an opening. I just want to say that after looking this crowd over, New York is comparatively safe tonight. <laughs> now, let me remind you, that since I've been the head of this organization, there's only been one man sent up. Think that over. And before I took hold of you and organized you, if you don't mind my saying so. What were you? Or possibly you've forgotten. 
Well, may I inquire what that has to do with what we're here for? It just has this to do with it. My leadership has been competent. I may even say brilliant. And I'll tell you why. I've always insisted when you go on a job, you come away with full hands but clean ones, not smeared with blood. Rocky knew that I was absolutely against killing, yet he did it uselessly, just because he was a butcher. I've tried to make you use your brain. Anybody can use a gat and burn for it. We've always been successful because we respected human life and fought faster than the other fellow. And most of that fast thinking has been on my part. This nightclub is my idea. I organized it, operated it, and showed a clean profit besides giving us a safe meeting place. But lately, as you all know, I wanted to quit the game entirely. But something came into my life that, well, as the fiction writers put it, something made me want to go straight. Oh, don't listen to him. He'll try to talk you into believing that Rocky was a traitor. He was. He was always a killer. And when I called him for disobeying orders, he pulled a gat on me. I don't you realize that when he shot Coleman, he put you all in the shadow of the chair? You're lying. I was there. You shot him down cold like a dog. Uh, shut up. You wasn't there. Steady, Mom. Now, just a minute. I think we're getting away from the main issue, which is, why did I shoot Rocky? Yes, I did shoot him. I shot him in self-defense. You don't believe that, do you, boy? No! You lied! What's that noise? What's that noise? Hello. What are you doing here? We didn't do anything. We were just here watching the... Wait a minute. Can you beat that? They're the two kids we picked up at Coleman's place. Something wrong here. Mm -hmm. Take them downtown. Well, I know we're on the right track now. And if I can get that guy, Rocky Mosby... All right, well, wait a minute. Here, boys, take these two birds downtown. All right, Chief. You wouldn't think a couple of kids like that would be mixed up with a bunch of gunmen? Well, they start young these days. Some gang, all right. They might as well be deaf and dumb for all you can get out of them. Can't somebody get something out of those two kids? Nothing any of them says is worth a hoot. I want to land this bird Fenmore for murder, and nothing less. I thought I could make the old guy cough up. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the mouse. Yeah. But he wouldn't spill. He was cagier than any of them. Well, Bill's had the boy in there trying to make him talk. They know the truth if we can get it out of them. Well, all they'll admit is that they were at Coleman's before the holdup, and they insist that they were looking for wedding rings, and nobody sent them. Bring that boy in here. Haven't you? You ready to tell me who sent you to Coleman's? <laughs> His name was Rocky. That's, That's the only name we knew. That's the fellow we found dead in Fenmore's apartment, isn't it? Yes. You know Gene Fenmore? No. You know who killed Coleman? 
<laughs> yes, it was Rocky. And who killed Rocky? Oh, I don't know. Yes, you do, too. It was Gene Fenmore. Your girlfriend there just said so. No, I didn't. Don't believe him, Tommy. This Rocky was a member of Gene Fenmore's gang, wasn't he? I don't know. Say, who took you to the club last night? Tommy. Hey, you didn't happen to see Gene Fenmore while you were there, did you? No. Then you wouldn't know him if you saw him. No, no, I don't know him. You do know that you're implicated in the Coleman murder, don't you? Your accessories. And an accessory pays the penalty just the same as a murderer. We didn't have anything to do with it, I tell you. I know you tell me, but I don't believe you. I didn't believe you when I had you down here after the hold-up, and I don't believe you now. Now, listen here, you kids. If you want to come clean with me and tell me who planned the Coleman hold-up and the names of Rocky's pals, well, I'll promise to let you off easy. Why, maybe I can get you off altogether. All I know is Rocky gave us money to buy an engagement and a wedding ring. Oh, take him out of here. Come on. Go ahead. You're a couple of saps. Going to the electric chair to protect a cheap crook will only be caught sooner or later anyway. Go on, take him out. Everything they said? Everything. Yes. Good. How are you getting out and get their signatures? We got him, Inspector. Good. Where'd you find him? In his apartment, taking a bath. Any signs about the place? No, sir. No signs. He's a cool guy. He never batted an eye when we told him he was wanted for murder. Mm. Bring him in. Yes, sir. How do you do, Eugene? Why so formal, call me Jean. Thanks. You know, eventually I always meet the distinguished members of your profession. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, just a moment. Well. And more, I wonder if you happen to know these two youngsters. No, I don't. You're quite sure? You better take a closer look. Positive. Tommy, this is the gentleman I referred to, Mr. Fenmore. Look at him. Look at him. That's it. You ever seen him before? No. Never. No. Young lady, perhaps you know this gentleman. No, sir. Now, I want you two to fix your eyes on one another. And perhaps you'll recall having met before. The dictaphone's tucked away. Yeah, very prudent of you. Yes, important men must be caught. Would you mind taking those off? I, I'd like to have a free hand in the conversation. Charlie, we're going to have a nice little private talk. Sit down. I saw you before tonight. Yeah? Thought you were funny pulling that stunt on me, huh? You mean tonight at the club? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got you, Fenmore. And I'm going to send you to the chair. Yeah? Well, that's a nice prospect. How are you going to do it? 
I've got the goods on you. Well, if you had the goods on me, you wouldn't be talking to me now. You planned the Coleman holdup. What makes you think so? It was so clever, Gene. It took a brain like yours to plan it. Well, that's the goods you have on me. I think you'll have to have something else. You know, Fenmore, while you've been running around with a lot of nice people, I've known all along that you were the leader of the worst band of guerrillas in the city. I've been throwing lassos at you for some time. I caught an arm, I caught a leg. But what I wanted was your neck. Somehow these guerrillas of yours wouldn't commit murder. But this time, they did. And so you see, I've at last got your neck. Who are you driving at? I want you to sign a confession that you planned the Coleman holdup. Oh, is that all? That's all. Just a scratch of the pen, Gene. Just a scratch of the pen. Send myself to the chair. Well, that is simple, isn't it? You know, Gene, the real tragedy is not Rocky or Coleman, but these two young people. You mean the young people I saw here tonight? Yeah. Well, what about them? Oh, quit stalling. You know all about them. But I don't. And they're just as guilty of murder as your pal Rocky, who did the actual shooting. And I'm going to convict them. Well, what jury would convict those two kids? Well, the girl might get off of the stretch. But the boys going to the chair with you and the rest of the gang says we nabbed tonight just as sure as shooting. Do you know Dorothy Palmer? Who? Dorothy Palmer. No. No? Well, she was your girl once. And she was pretty fond of your friend Rocky. We found his body tonight in your apartment after the raid. You killed him, didn't you? Well, if I did, I certainly don't remember it. Well, don't worry. The police department's already given you a vote of thanks for that. But I'm going to convict you for the murder of Coleman, too. Yeah, well, how are you going to do it? Well, what's your evidence? Carloads, supplied by three star witnesses who have turned state's evidence. You don't mind if I don't believe you? No, it's all right. I'm going to prove it to you. Just a moment. One of the state's star witnesses, your former sweetheart. I don't know the lady. You don't know me, Jean. Oh, don't make me laugh. Now listen, I helped land you and I'm glad of it. And unless you have me bumped off, I'll be reading what you ate for your last meal in Sing Sing. You oh, Miss Palmer, Miss Palmer, please, that's enough. Thank you. Oh, goodbye, Jean. And when you see him, give my love to Rocky. Well, is that enough? Well, you played it all right, but one ace won't beat me. All right, I'll play a trump ace. The kids have already admitted that Rocky sent them on the job and that Rocky killed Coleman. They've signed a confession. You mean to say those kids have confessed to being accessories? Read it. Maybe they didn't know what they were doing when they went to Coleman. Well, it'll be pretty hard to make a jury believe that. Can I see them a minute? Sure. Did you sign that confession? Yes. Yes, we signed it. I leave you folks alone to talk it over. You've got us into this. Get us out of it. The man is a stranger to us. We've never seen him before. I'm very sorry. Words won't do us any good. Get us out of this, won't you? I'll try. All you have to do is tell him we were innocent. Tell him Rocky put up a job on us. Yes, Gene, all you have to say is you knew Rocky sent us into that store without telling us there was going to be a holdup. Then they'd let us go. That wouldn't incriminate you any, would it? Why, certainly not. Oh, Gene, they mustn't do anything to tell me if they did. I couldn't live without him. statement I prepared for you, Gene. Read it. What'd you go to all that trouble for? You know I won't sign it. You won't sign it, huh? Not unless you're able to offer me something very attractive. And what do you want? I want to see you alone.
what is it? I want the absolute unconditional freedom of those two youngsters. They're not even to be mentioned in the case. They're going up, and so are you. Oh, yes, I am. I'll fight this till doomsday. Jimmies and guns aren't the only weapons I have. There's a lot of good lawyers in this town who'll keep me out of jail for a hundred thousand bucks. Maybe you're right, but I'll take a chance on it. I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Mr. District Attorney. I'll admit everything and take the rap. If you let those kids go. All right. I'll give you a letter that will guarantee their freedom. That they're innocent victims. If you'll sign that. I'll sign it when I get your guarantee. Okay. You mind if I go in and see the kids? It's all right. Well, Charlie. Don't worry, it'll be all right. You always have good pens here. Charlie, I want you to witness that. You got Marcy here? Yes, he's just outside. Do you mind if I see him? Hmm. Put that in the vault and tell Marcy to come in here. Freedom, kid. You youngsters, go on home now. I'm going to keep an eye on you. I might need you. You're not to leave the city, you understand? Yes, sir. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Nancy. Everything's all right now, isn't it? Yes, of course it's all right. Nothing will happen to you. No, nothing's going to happen to me. He knows you didn't have anything to do with it, doesn't he? Why, of course he knows there's nothing to do with it. Now, you go on home. I'll, I'll call you up later at the house. All right. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Nancy. I want you to do me a favor, Marcy. Anything, Chief? I want you to look after those kids for me. Understand? Sure, Chief, but how can I? You're going out of here. I'll fix it all up with my lawyer this morning. But I want to know that they're well taken care of. Aren't you going out too? Not as soon as you are. I know I can depend on you, Mousy. And it'll make me feel better if she's all right. I got you, boy. You can count on me till they carry me out. You're a pretty regular fellow, Gene. Too bad you couldn't have done something better than lead a bunch of crooks. You know, I've been connected with the police department for a number of years. And I've seen the best of them come and go. And you can't get away with it. It's always a losing game. Well, at least you owe my profession a debt of gratitude. If it wasn't for men like me, there wouldn't be any necessity for men like you.